Hey, She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunslick. And if you are listening to this uh, close to the time that it is released, then happy 4th of July to everybody. This past week was the 4th, and I hope that you ate lots of watermelon and watched lots of fireworks. Unless fireworks are not your jam, then I hope you said, screw it. I don't like fireworks and you didn't watch any and you weren't societally pressured into pretending you like fireworks. I am mixed about fireworks. I'm glad you asked. Um, I like five minutes of fireworks. I don't think that I would feel fully fulfilled waking up on July 5th if I hadn't seen something explode in the air. Um, because I am a maximizer and I need to check things off a list. But, and they're pretty, they're pretty, um, but they just get a little old. Like, am I right? Like, okay, got it, got it. You like lighting things on fire. Um, one of my toxic traits is that I need to, besides needing to maximize every single holiday and like check things off a list, um, instead of just being present and allowing flow to go. Nope. Hyper control. Anyways, my other toxic trait is I need to rank things. So like, then this is in all, all walks of life. Like if you could come up to me and say, Lauren, what are your top three flowers? And I would go, I would take it too seriously. And I'd be like, oh, okay. So it used to be peonies is number one, but I think poppies might be number one now, but I'm not, oh, yes. Mm. And I would strongly debate. So what if you're sitting next to me while we're watching fireworks, I will, I need you to know which one is my favorite. So I'll be like, oh, that one is my favorite. And then another one will come. And I'll be like, nope, nope, that one is my favorite now. That is my new favorite. What, like, and I need to know which one is your favorite. And if you tried giving me a vague answer, like, well, I like that one and I like this one, I'd be like, but which one do you like the most? So yeah, there you go. I, one of the things I was supposed to start this week and did not was the worm cleanse. So if you haven't listened to episode 213 yet, I believe it's 213. Um, yes, it's 213 with Kim Rogers, the worm queen on. What are you doing? Go listen to it. It was such an interesting episode. And pretty much my takeaway is that we're all nasty, dirty humans who need to do a parasite cleanse. And you, if you're going to do a cleanse, you should start around the 4th of July. No, no, not the 4th of July, silly, sorry, or on a full moon. But this year, the full moon was on July 3rd. And so the reason you're supposed to start around a full moon is because that is when your parasites detach from you and feed on the serotonin that in your blood because your body makes a bunch of extra blood or serotonin during a full moon and it loves serotonin. And so it goes around your body eating your serotonin. Isn't that nasty? Oh my gosh. So I was going to start on July 3rd because after I recorded the episode, I was like, okay, family, we are all doing this. So I ordered four. I ordered like extras for my mom, for my friends. I'm like, I don't care. You need to get rid of your parasites. We're all gross humans. Get them. But my kids are at a camp. I dumbly signed them up for a day camp the week of 4th of July. So we were supposed to start on the 3rd, but that was their first day at camp. And I didn't know what kind of like shedding they were going to be. You know, there's all these symptoms that you can experience when you're deworming yourself. Um, but I will say that uh, the cool thing about this cleanse is she does include some like extra herbs and stuff in, in the tinctures to try and make it easier. I don't know. Um, but I've never done it. And I didn't want my kid to be at camp and like to poop out a pinworm or something. Um, mostly because I want them to feel safe and supported if something traumatizing like that happens. Also because I'm super gross and I would want to see that pinworm and I would be jealous. I would, I would be jealous if my kid came home and was like, mom, you will never believe this. I was at camp and I pooped out a six inch pinworm. I actually don't know how big pinworms are. I think they're really tiny, but a bunch of pinworms. And I would be like, no, are you okay? Did that scare you? What did it look like? Like how many pinworms? Um, and so I, I, anyways, we're going to start it next week when they're home and they can poop out 
parasites and things like that. Welcome to the podcast. If this is your first time listening, we don't usually talk about poop this much, but there's no guarantee. Um, so we're going to start next week, but now I'm a little nervous of like, do parasites, because we're going to be getting closer to the new moon. So do parasites hold on extra tight to their host? I don't know, but I'm not going to overthink it. No, I am not going to overthink it. We're going to start. We're going to do it. No, I will not post any pictures. You do not need to worry. Yes, I am an oversharer, but even I wouldn't cross that line. I don't even think I'd be brave enough to like post a zit popping. Like that's just gross. That's not the brand. Ew. We talk about gross stuff and toxic traits, but we don't share them. But I would watch one of those videos. I'm just saying. I don't search them out. They're like popping zits. We've moved on from poop to popping zits. I don't search them out. But I, if one just like stumbled across my TikTok, I wouldn't not watch it. That's what I'm saying. There we go. I just shared all my gross secrets with you. Um, but you know what? Our guest today, the beginning of our conversation, so I have Dr. Megan MacArthur on. We, she came on to talk about finance. And we do talk about student loans and initial investing when you don't feel like you have enough money to start investing. But the first part of our conversation, we talk about social media. Um, I share all my dear, like secret dark secrets um, that are kind of gross. If you don't know what being an Enneagram three is like being in your head and like comparing everything, um, be, be prepared to judge me and be like, damn, Lauren, you're pretty messed up. But to that, I would say you are too. You just are not in this room for me to dissect all the different ways that you're super messed up too. And you don't have a microphone to overshare. So don't judge me too harshly. Yeah. All right. Oh, anyway, speaking of social media, there is, if you are listening close to the time of this drop, then you may or may not have time to still register for the free attraction and marketing summit that's coming up July 11th through 13th. It is for chiropractors to help take their practice to new heights, attract more patients. Um, It's a three-day virtual summit and it's there to just from different experts to help with insider secrets, proven marketing strategies, techniques, just to transform your practice. So I hope that if you're listening, we'll have that link below. You can go ahead and register for that for free and, I don't know, learn something. All right, let's, should we, should we get to it? Have we, have we stalled enough? I, I do believe. Okay. So today we have Megan MacArthur and here is her bio. It says, hi, I'm a chiropractor and the founder of Wealth with Meg. I'm on a mission to empower individuals with the knowledge and tools to achieve optimal health and financial well-being. As a healthcare practitioner, I understand how common stress around money and its negative effects. Wait, did I? around money is. Oh, you guys, it is going like screw up or bio. Hold on. As a healthcare practitioner, we're, we're restarting. I understand how common stress around money is and its negative effects on our bodies. There we go. I would have put a comma there, but I have learned that I'm one of those people who puts too many commas. I think there's a name for it, but I overuse commas. So if you ever see, oh, and exclamation marks. I'm really sorry if you've ever gotten an email from me. Um, Okay, we are in the middle of her bio, but I do think this is a funny mini story. We'll get back to Megan's. Don't worry. She's st- she's just hanging out waiting. So Kirby and I both manage our Airbnb. We both get alerts when the message comes. And I am obviously a woman, so I overuse exclamation marks. And he is a man, and so he doesn't use them at all. What is that gender issue? Um, and so... If I see that he's responded to like a guest's inquiry, he never uses enough exclamation marks. And I'm like, oh, Kirby, they are going to think you wrote that mainly like where are the batteries? They're in the junk drawer next to the stove, period. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, that's all you wrote? Like they're going to give us four stars now. Oh, my gosh. Um, And then he goes, you can do all of it. You want it? I said, no, never mind. You're doing just fine. I just make sure that the next time they can. But people interacting with us have got to think that we have split personality disorder because then I'll come in with like extra exclamation marks to try and make up for it. So back to Megan. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how do we do this? Oh, yeah. I would have put a comma there. So her unique approach combines health 
expertise with her knowledge of finance, helping her community achieve balance, not only in their bank accounts, but also in their overall well-being. You're going to learn educational content in a simple and fun way with practical tips. All right, back to me, not her bio. You are going to love this episode. Um, she brought a ton of value. Like I say, we talk about a little bit about social media that was unplanned in the beginning. We talk about, so she is currently looking for the right associate job and I am looking for the right associate. So we just have a little chit chat about solving the world's problems. And then yes, we do get on to finance. Um, and I think that it, I think you're going to get a ton out of it, whether you're still in school or newly graduated, or maybe you are really focused on student loans right now. Maybe you've been in practice quite a while and you're like, tell me about student loans. She does her homework. She's got a lot, a lot of information. So, Without jumping in, you know what we have to do first. We're going to take a breath. We're going to pray. We're going to ground ourselves. So if you were standing and you're able to close your eyes, great not, that's okay. If you're sitting, again, close your eyes if you can. If not, don't worry. Notice where your body is touching the surface of the earth, whether it's a chair or the ground or the gas pedals. Evenly distribute your weight. Try and see if you can slow your breathing. Can you feel your heartbeat in your chest? Relax your jaw. Straighten your posture. Take a breath. Reminder that you are a human being, not a human doing. And if you're like me and you just rush through life, doing, 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 maximizing, crossing things off a checklist, reminder that there is going to be a day, hopefully long, long, long time from now, where you are going to be standing before God, source, fill in whatever you believe. And it's not going to be a question of how much wealth you accumulated, how many cities in the world you saw, how many followers you got, but how much you used your unique talents, your unique knowledge, your unique situation and hurdles in this life to impact those around you. How well were you willing to be used? used on this earth as a being to spread love and light and joy to everyone around you. So if you need that reminder today that yes, you have a checklist, but that's not what you're here for. Those are doing things that need to get done, but you're here for so much less than that. You can be so impactful and fulfill your purpose by doing so much less than you think you need to. And it's as simple as just when you're done listening to this episode, shining love and light on as many people as you can, helping them laugh, lifting up their days, and being, being willing to be used for all your uniqueness, however you can, in everything you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, without further ado, here is my conversation with Megan MacArthur. Enjoy. So what's funny is the reason I was one minute late is because I was trying to get a different background that has like a fake neon sign. And so I downloaded it from Canva, but it, I'm just so not techie. It showed up backwards. And I was like, so I'm in Canva trying to figure out how to reverse the text, oh, yeah. which I know has got to be just an easy, like, oh, you just click here and click this. Okay. Like, I know this is the thing, but I'm just like in Canva, like doing the oh, ugly text is- face of like, why, where is this button? And I'm like, oh shit, it's time. It's time. So, so I'm going to just unblur it. It's fine. And this is a funny thing. Like we will probably be using this now. Just, you know, we've officially started the podcast. Um, I've watched your social grow like exponentially over the last six months, right? It's been wild. Literally. If you would have told me where I am today, a year ago, when I graduated, I would have laughed in your face. I would have been like, yeah, right. And you just like, I've set goals and I've just smashed them. And I thought they were so out of reach, like incredibly. The reason I've, okay. So first of all, did you do your Enneagram test? I did last night in bed at 9 PM because I prepared. (laughs) What did it say you were? And I knew it was going to say this. I am a three through and through. I definitely hold myself to very high standards. I'm an achiever, all the things. 
A lot uh, of people will get mistyped as a two or a three, but like, I have a feeling you might actually be a three. Okay. So as a three, um, on like, you know, we're all comparison achievers, right? Like, and just cause I compare doesn't mean that I want less for my competition, but like, that's just so uh dirty little secret. I could probably tell you within 1000 followers, I could probably list like 10 of the main people moving and shaking within chiropractic and what their following count is on Instagram. Like, there we go. I just admitted it to the world. I'm a gross human. It's just like, I just am always comparing. I was like this in college too. We'd get our test papers back and I would like turn to my friends and I'd be like, what'd you get? What'd you get? And I wouldn't feel bad if they got better than me. Like, it wasn't like I was like, I need to be the best. I just need to know that I am not super far behind. Correct. That's how I feel. And (laughs) when comparing things, it's not that like, I feel like I need to be better than them, but I just want to know where the like playing field is at. Yes, exactly. And so it sounds so gross to someone else, but I'm like, no, no, no. I just like, if 10 of the people who I come, like, I think are my peers have 30,000 followers within chiropractic. Well, then I go like, okay, I am missing something I need to be doing better. So anyways, I have watched you and I feel like, I don't know when it happened, but you figured out your audience. Like, yeah. And like your reels are simple, but like engaging and effective. And so like, it doesn't surprise me. And because I'm just girl, you haven't gone viral. Like maybe you had like one or two that did like really, really well. But But when I look, yeah, when I look at your videos, it has just been slow and steady quality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, The craziest thing was I realized you have to like, everyone says it, but you really do have to talk to them as if you're explaining, okay, you're feeling this. And then these are the steps to take, but this is the solution. Like, You have to give them that action step. So many people will be like, you need to invest, invest, invest. But they're like, okay, I know I need to invest. How do I do it? And the simpler, the better. So I used to be so caught up in making complex, complicated things, but simplicity is key. And I did, weirdly enough, go. So I just started a TikTok. My husband was in the hospital at the beginning of the year. And this sounds so bad, but I was a little bored. Like he was just three. It's okay. (laughs) Um, I can't sit still. So he was sitting there and I just started TikTok and I put a TikTok on and it got like 300,000 views. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening right now? And so I haven't seen though, a lot of TikTokers come from Instagram or vice versa, which is interesting, but that definitely helped me. I mean, skyrocket TikTok. Yeah. But where where are you at with subscribers on TikTok? I think it's like 6,200 something. Oh, so it's interesting that you started viral on TikTok. Okay, yeah. so here's the more important question then besides followers though. I would guess that your engagement rate on Instagram is a lot better. It is. Yeah. It is so much better. And that's the thing is like, I've seen other chiropractors or even other people go viral on Instagram, which is amazing. But then the engagement rank, uh, engagement rate tanks. Oh yeah, that happened to our clinic. Like yeah. I actively, I am like anti going viral um, yes. because it, it ruined our account. Like I was yeah. like, and it, like if you're trying to use your Instagram, like to sell something or to get more information out, you want people to be able to find you and engage in that content. And if you have a hundred plus thousand followers, maybe three to 10,000 are going to see it. Yes. But not 80 to 90. But not, not the quality. Yeah, that's the percentage thing that I'll break down of like, you know, so yeah. So anyways, great job. I, I really, really enjoy your Instagram. And um, I have a feeling that it's just going to keep like ticking, ticking up. There, but six steady, months. And that's exactly kind of the way I wanted it to go. Yeah, that's been the same with She Slays. It's been frustrating, really frustrating. Because uh, I think this is the fourth year of the account. And it's just like a hundred people a month, just another hundred people a month. And I'm like, can I just please go viral within chiropractic and like get up to like Courtney Kayla status? Come on, come on. But it's the micro niche. It's, she it's, is a micro niche for sure. You know, yeah. like, it, it, are it's, you a female chiropractor who runs a pediatric practice? Have I got a podcast for you? <laughs> right. There you go. 
No, Instagram, and it just keeps changing too. Like I just had a friend text me this morning. Am I supposed to be using like keywords with commas at the end? Or am I supposed to be using hashtags? And I'm like, look, I don't know. Nobody knows, just experiment around. That's the best you can advise people on. So here's why I'm convinced that hash, this is, I love that this, I turn, <laughs> I love talking about social media. So, um, and what's funny is this episode is coming after a TikTok episode. So I know that hashtags are still working because Instagram still shows me suggested content based on hashtags that mm. I follow. But okay. who, here's the thing is who's following hashtags anymore. So yeah. like I have I a, know. right? Like I used I, to go oh. and follow hash. Oh, well, this is what we did a year ago, like a year and a half ago. Like when you were trying to grow and you weren't focused on passing exams, you, we would like, you'd follow hashtags. And now I, yeah, I don't follow that anymore, but yeah. But yeah, so it's they still kind ever of changing. ever changing. Okay, so anyways, we're not, we di- we digress. Yeah. So that, you said you, yeah, you graduated a year ago. Yes, June twenty twenty two. Okay, and you associated right away. I started in August, so I had like two months off. Okay, and how did you decide to start associating versus like did you as a three? How yes. did you make that decision versus opening your own? When I was in chiropractic school, I will never forget first quarter. We had like a really great group of friends in my quarter, which I was so grateful for. But everyone was like, I'm opening, I'm opening, I'm opening. And I'm like, am I supposed to be opening? Like, I do not want to do that right away. Like, that does not make financial sense. I can't just go out and open after I graduate. What? And I've had some friends do it and they are doing such a great job. And it's like, okay. Totally a great opportunity and an option for you. But for me, I just knew I wanted to associate for a couple of years. Obviously, that's changed a little bit now. But um, Why yeah, so that I changed because I'm currently not associating. And so are I, you going to start a practice? No. Oh, okay. not yet. So I kind of like weirdly found this path into social media management for chiropractors or holistic health practices. So that's what I'm doing right now. I still don't have my Texas license, but. I am running the practice I was at. I'm running their social and I'm running three other social medias, which is like weird, but so fun because it's combining two of my passions that I've always had into one job. Um, And I'm not against associating or ever going back to chiropractic. Obviously, I would love to, but it has to be the right fit. Yeah. The associate position that I left set the bar incredibly high and it was like, there's just no comparison right now. Mm -hmm. and the places that I've interviewed and kind of gone and seen but I decided to associate just like from day one I knew that's what I was doing so this is really interesting I had no intention of actually we're going to get around to the in the student loans and all that stuff (laughs) we'll get there we'll get there Um, so what you're saying and kind of the situation you're in um so for the last year maybe a little more uh so I had my course and the multi-passionate chiropractor, and we had a lot of chiropractors in there that were looking for associates or had associates. And there's this like, I don't know, I, I'll call it a reckoning that is happening. And I don't necessarily know how long it's going to take to figure out. And I don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be. But after a year of really sitting in this dilemma, I think I have an idea. So we have certain really awesome uh, like chiropractic, co- um, like job partnering groups, right. Uh, that will say like, you want associate, Great. But now the standard is like, you should be paying someone 80, 90, a hundred thousand dollars out of, you know, like that's what an associate should be getting. And I think that if you run a certain style of practice where your profitability is really high, you know, um, you can go, yeah, I need an associate. I can start someone out at 90 or hundred gram. And there's a whole bunch of practices that are like, I can't afford that. Like, I don't even necessarily make that. And, but okay. So then the other thing I'm seeing, so we have this little dilemma that we're just going to put on a pedestal for a second. Then we have this other thing where we have millennials and Gen Z not wanting to work five days a week in a brick and mortar. That's the big thing is like, I'm not afraid to work. I love working, but I don't love the brick and mortar aspect. And I think we're seeing that even more 
like we're just going to see that more and more that freedom the ability to be like that laptop warrior is really important and covid definitely accelerated that like i feel like it was coming and then covid was just like okay remote work and it just propelled it tenfold and that's literally why unless it's in a a great perfect associateship which not perfect cuz that's hard to find but I like being able to work the hours that I want to. Again, very similar to you. I'm a three. I love to work. I will work more than 40 hours. And you want to adjust. Like, Uh, I'm sure you want to adjust. You just don't want to only adjust and that to be your only income. Well, and so then what we see happening is we have all of these people like you who are like, well, I don't necessarily want to open my own practice. I kind of just want to like show up and adjust right now but you're forced into opening your own practice so you can create, try and create this freedom. So what I think we're going to see happen, and it might take five plus years to catch on, but I am starting to do it in our clinic now, is I want to, so this kind of all comes down to capacity of like in our clinic, really, you know, and everybody's clinic is super different, but like with the systems and procedures and how long appointments are and our patient base, like you know, 200 to 225 is about the max that a chiropractor is go- an associate is going to be able to adjust before they get really tired. So if I had you for five days a week, it doesn't matter if I have you adjusting 40 hours, you're likely going to get exhausted and burnt out after if you're consistently. De- so what I want to start doing is start moving people to like a three day work week, but paying exactly. them like paying them the salary that I would have for 36 hours, but being like, you're going to work three, eight to 10 hour days. Great. You're going to see a ton of people or, you know, the max amount that your body's physical of seeing in those three days. And you're going to have a four day life to run social media, go on a vacation, raise your kid, like whatever you want. So the practice I was at, it was a four day, it was a three and a half day week because it was half days, Tuesdays, and they were closed Friday. So, I mean, that's a three day weekend every weekend, which I mean, my husband right now, I'm like, it's Friday. What what are you doing going to work? Like what? And he's like, I work five days a week. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the norm. But the norm needs to be four days a week. And you just need to have that time to recharge, but still get paid the salary as if you were doing the 40 hours a week, which is how it was, which is incredible. Like you work your butt off for four days and then you have three days to recover. Yeah. I know a lot of chiropractors are much more, I I know this for a fact because I've been promoting chiropractic positions on the social media since September. Uh, Most chiropractors are comfortable starting an associate at the 50 to 70,000 range. And so it's like, if you figure out like, okay, how many people can you adjust? Can you, can you adjust 200 people in three days in our clinic? you know, that's the numbers that it runs for somebody else's clinic, but you're like, okay, cool. I'll give you three days, a full-time salary and adjust away. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. There, and then, then all of a sudden you've got an associate who's not comparing 90,000, which would be lovely and five days a week, but you're comparing, okay, it's starting at 60. It'll go up, but it's only three days a week. So then I have the freedom to do this side hustle Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I think, would you like to come to Wisconsin? (laughs) I would not. Oh, that's right. Also geography. (laughs) Yeah, it is uh, triple digits here. So not that that's lovely, but I really am not moving again. It is a pain in the butt and I'm not doing it. (laughs) But yeah, I think you're onto it. It will, that will be, it, it has to, something has to change and give. And I think that'll be it because Again, if you can afford $90,000 for five days a week, that's great. It's great. If you but you also then have to find someone who's willing to work. Hey, She Slayers, are you looking to get your team off the phone and streamline your front desk so you can spend more time doing what you love? SCED has exactly what you're looking for. They will automate all your appointment reminders, missed appointment reminders, reactivation campaigns, allow you to have two way texting with your patients. Plus, they have a very cool app that your patients are going to love. The app alone saves chiropractors tons of time because it gives patients the flexibility to move appointments to a time that works better for them. Don't worry, you won't lose control of your schedule. 
because you'll have access to all the parameters that keep you still in control. Plus, there's overbook protection, so your schedule won't get out of hand. SCED was created by a chiropractor for chiropractors, so you can rest assured that you're getting the absolute best system for your office. Dr. Eric Kowalki is committed to the chiropractic mission, and he works closely with his developers to always be innovative so that we have the best system available. If you're hesitant to switch to SCED because you already use something else, let me tell you, it's worth every penny. Plus, mention that you heard about it on my podcast and they'll give you a discount. Seriously, it is a game changer. Don't wait. Hey, She Slayers. So a question I get asked a lot is, what have I found that works best to get new patients in the door? Well, my friends over at the Pediatric Experience have put together the ultimate branding and marketing playbook that does a comprehensive job to answer this question, and they even include a free video training that comes with it. This free guide reveals the secrets to a kick-ass, wildly effective marketing system that consistently brings in over 20 new patients every single month. And guess what? It's all organic. Picture this, a proven approach that will grow your patient numbers while you focus on doing what you do best, providing exceptional chiropractic care. Inside the playbook, you'll discover the five core elements of this powerful marketing system, from crafting a compelling brand to implementing strategic marketing strategies, they've got you covered. If you know PX, Dr. Tony and that crew, they practice exactly what they preach, and it's no different in the latest PDF Plus training they've put together for you. So if you're ready to attract more patients through the door, grow your practice, and dominate your local market, this guide is a must-have for you. So check out the link in the description to get your free download and video training. Willing. I mean, I hate that, but like our generation and the next generation they don't want to be in a location eight to five, five days a week. Like it's not. Well, and I've had the luxury now of like three, I mean, three months, two months, and I haven't gone to an office and it is having the freedom to control my time is liberating in a sense. Obviously I'm a suggesting and all, all of that, but like, it would be really hard to get me back in an office five days a week because you don't, you have to be there those set hours every day of the week, except the weekend. And it's just not enough. The weekend's not long enough to rejuvenate and get back. Plus like when you're in the office, you kind of feel confined to it. Like you're dealing with patients, you're so on. And then when you get off, it's like 6 PM because you have to be there for people after work and you're just tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to see the world. I want to see the world, but I also want to be working. Like I don't want to be on vacation for six months a year. Yeah. But like, I would like to have a lot more freedom than, than yeah, is like, currently being offered. So we just went to Costa Rica last month for seven days and I was working the whole time. And my husband looked at me, he's like, are you going to like take a break? And I was like, it doesn't really feel like work. Like I'm just posted on social media. It takes, you know, an hour, two hours, but I'm sitting on the beach while doing it. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. It's like, I'm multitasking. I'm sunbathing. I'm working. <laughs> I'm going to set the phone down. We're going to go surfing. It's going to be great. But that's exactly where that's, what's going to have to happen. I feel like I completely agree with you. Yeah. But I feel like, um, like a weirdo being out there being like, Hey guys, I think we start moving our associates to three day weeks. And, uh, but, but, well, yeah. I saw something actually that I think the UK does four day work weeks, like kind of in Europe, they do four day work weeks, but I saw something that there was a poll or a survey about doing it in the U S and of course, everyone was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see what happens with it. Well, and the big thing is, I mean, there's so many different layers to what a, a clinic would have to do to make that work because you also need your if you're only working three days a week and you run a clinic that like all your patients only see you, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the, our clinic runs where everybody sees everybody. So, yeah, I guess if you have, so that was how it was. Everyone saw everyone mm -hmm. when I was practicing in Tennessee, but I think another way is you could do shifts. Like not everyone has to be there all the time right. and you could. Yeah. Shift. It's not like you're only open Monday through Wednesday. Yeah. Like somebody's open Monday through Wednesday. Somebody's working Tuesday through Thursday, somebody's working Wednesday through Saturday morning. Like, yes, I think we're onto something. I'm pretty sure we just solved it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we did. Okay. So anyways, so talking about your social and your side hustle, you have really just 
gotten a ton of traction and fallen in love with helping people invest. But what I think is great is you're not like you're super accessible, accessible investing. So when did you start? Like, do you have a finance background? How did you start in the world of like, because it's, it's overwhelming. It's scary. It is definitely intimidating to get started. So I'm very fortunate and I don't want to like just dismiss that. I am very fortunate that I came from a family that was financially literate because a lot of people don't have that advantage and it's definitely an advantage, but it was really during COVID that I had the time to just go all in and learn. Like my parents would tell me things growing up and I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. I, I, I'm not there yet. Were they entrepreneurs or what did they do? So my mom used to be an accountant and my dad is in tax law. So they're very like well-versed in the finance space. However, they talk at a very high level, which is why it always just went in one ear and out the other. So I, it was really during COVID after talking to my peers and realizing that we are coming out of school with a lot of student loan debt. So much debt. A lot of my friends also had credit card debt, which is even worse in a sense because it's higher interest rates. And I just realized that like nobody knows how to figure out a plan, let alone then execute that plan. So I just started learning all that I could. And it was all the things my parents used to tell me about. Like I've heard Roth IRA since I was like 10 years old. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't know what that is. And when I realized that I could take that information and that knowledge and convey it in a much easier, understandable way for like the everyday average Joe to understand, that's when I really started to like go with my page. But my Instagram started as a chiropractic book page. And I just <laughs> talk <laughs> about learning your audience and taking a pivot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to start like one of those future chiropractor pages. And then I was like, this is dumb. Like, let me niche down onto finance and like helping postgrads figure out what to do with their money when they start making it. Because again, a lot of people went from undergrad, went to graduate school, and this is their first real full-time job without school as well. And they were like, okay, I have this money now. What do I do with it? So did you start dollars. investing while you were in school or did you wait until you actually started to get a paycheck? So you can, because that would be one of my first questions is like, well, I was getting a paycheck in school. It was from the United States. And <laughs> so <laughs> one year, side note, one year I had an extra, oh God, I'm so um, like $2,000 or $1,500 left at the end. And I was going to be getting a new like $6,000 check. And so we went to Vegas. We didn't like gamble or anything, but like, we're like, we have extra money. Let's Here we go. And now that $2,000 is like $6,000. Uh, I was so impressed with how cheap that trip was. And I'm like, yeah, that trip did not end up being as cheap as I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, the hindsight's always 2020. But I started investing. So you can't invest unless you're making money. So not from the government. But if you're working a part-time job, go ahead and you can start investing. So I would work during the summer, not during grad school, but during undergrad. So when I was 18, I opened up a Roth IRA and the summer money, I would just put like 50 to hundred dollars in there. Because again, I was like, Oh, the Nordstrom's anniversary sale is coming. I need to spend a thousand dollars on that because I have money. And I used to blow through money in just the most irresponsible way. It makes me sick to think about it. But literally the anniversary sale. Were you a was, server? I was a swim coach. So I've kind of always had this entrepreneurial spirit, which I didn't realize at the time, but I would be a swim coach and then I would give private swim lessons and people want their children to be the best. So they will pay a lot of money for me to teach them how to kick with a kickboard. And I would just do like 10 to 12 lessons a day, every day. And I would make a good amount of money, but I would put it in my safe. I would literally show up to the bank with this envelope of cash. And I'd always write like, I was going to say, did you have massive amounts of cash? That's why I asked if you were a server, because I had that mindset too. I would be like, I got $500 like money in my wallet. So I would show up to the bank and I would always put on the envelope, like graduation money, birthday money. So they didn't think I was just like in the drug, like stripper space or whatever, but <laughs> By the way, that's your Enneagram three showing that you didn't want the bankers to like falsely judge you and you needed their approval. Yep. Um, here's how I got this money in an approvable society. I'd always like push it. I could see it clearly. Yeah. 
But so I would literally every July is this Nordstrom anniversary sale. And I'm not kidding. I would spend like 500 to a thousand dollars. Cause I'm like, I got the money. Like, heck yeah. And then my parents were like, you need to like in, open this investment account and just start investing. And I was like, here's 50 bucks. Like, I don't know what to do, what I'm doing with it. But it wasn't until grad school that I really started to like, okay, understand what I'm investing in, how to invest for myself. So we do not pay um, any financial advisor because again, my parents obviously had their, their banks, their financial advisors, their CPAs. And I'm like, I am not, I opened a bank with Truist and I was getting a cent a month of interest. And I was like, screw this, dad, I'm going to Marcus and it's a high yield savings account. Have you heard of it? He's like, oh, what is that? And I'm like, it's an online bank. He's like, those aren't safe. I was like, they're FDIC insured, which means that if you lose, like if they go down, they'll insure your money. Um, he was like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting 5%, whereas I'm getting a penny over here. So I just moved all the money over. And then similarly, like, I'm just not going to follow that traditional path that like my parents taught me this about money. So I'm going to follow, use their people. I did the research. I understood it, which is the key point is to, you have to understand it. Yeah. We won't go down this rabbit hole, but I do recommend everybody goes and checks out like what you're talking about with the, the financial advisors and stuff like yeah, those fees are a lot. I just did a reel on it and people were like DMing me like, oh my God, I have a 1% fee. What do I do? And I was like, well, I can't legally give you financial advice, but I would suggest researching and maybe finding someone who doesn't charge you a 1% fee or doing it yourself. Yeah, anyway. Like robo advisors, great option. Totally what did you say? Advice. Rainbow? A robo advisor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're like robots. Um, but they are much lower fees and they just automatically do your um, investments for you. Mm. So that's where I started too. Okay. Like I had an IRA with Vanguard, but then, I mean, that was just like, I didn't know what I was doing with it right. until I learned. But then I started with a robo advisor who you, it's like a 0.25% fee instead of a 1% fee. And they'll put you in a target, they'll put you in funds, they'll reallocate for you, they'll diversify it for you. It's just a much easier, lower. Megan, how did you feel comfortable doing this? You are making me like squirm with like, ah, you used a robot and like. No, no, no. This is, They're this all is a while ago before even chat GPT. So like now I'm like, okay, there's a, but like, how did you feel confident like doing this with your money? Because they're FDIC insured. So that's literally like the number one thing you have to look for. Cause of, again, like my parents were like, well, what are you doing? And I was like, they're safe. And so my, I got one, I got my sister going. Cause she's like, I don't want to learn. And I don't want to like know what's going on. And I was like, okay, this is a great alternative. You're paying lower fees, but you're still hands off. But then if you don't want to trust a robo advisor and there's companies like the one I use Betterment, there's also like Wealthfront and One Finance. Those are great options. People are like frantically writing things down as they're right. driving. Yep. <laughs> I know I talk really fast too. But then if you don't want to trust a robot, open it with Vanguard or Fidelity and invest in a target date fund, which will reallocate your funds for you based on your retirement age. So right now I am a long way from retirement. So I have a lot, I have like 95% stocks, 5% bonds. And then every year I get closer, it will lower the stock percentage and increase the bond percentage because bonds are more conservative. Is there, okay, so if we had like um, a, oh gosh, what's like a good, a Shakeology person on the internet giving specific health advice, mm -hmm. like there's like legal rules around like, well, I actually, I don't know if there is. Is there rules around what, like, do you have to be a certain level of a credential to give health advice? I don't know where I'm going with this is yeah. like, are there, rules around what kind of advice you're able to give because you don't have like a da, da, da. yes so should have done this disclaimer at the front but ah, I, I <laughs> none of this is financial advice it's financial education so like even in a one-on-one -on -one session which I do I will just present all of the options and then the way that I try to teach or lead them to a conclusion is I give them questions to ask themselves because personal finance is extremely personal, which is a beautiful thing, but it also will just like, I cannot make a decision for you. I can just present you with the facts, the knowledge, the education, and then you can ask yourself these questions to come up with your own conclusion. 
Right. Okay. That makes sense. None of this is financial advice. Right. None of this is, none of this is even real. All of this is a dream. Um, Okay. So you started investing just with a little bit of money. Okay. So, I mean, you can literally start with a dollar. If you can set aside 10 bucks a month to invest, go for it. 50 to a hundred is what you should do. 50 to a hundred is like the ideal range. Yeah. Like you'll see returns with 50 to a hundred a month. You can, if you can get up to 6,500, that is the max you can contribute to a Roth IRA. A year. A year. Yeah. A year. So it's like 500 a month, 530 or something. That, that account alone will give you a million dollars at 65 years old. If you are in your twenties right now, like compound interest, once you reach that first hundred K compound interest just goes crazy. And getting to that first hundred K is the hardest thing. And it takes a lot of patience, but then it's just the wild, wild west from there. Now there are, it, Roth is the one that there's a limit where once you make a certain amount, you can't. Correct. But right. there are also more advanced tax strategies to do it. Yes. <laughs> to make sure you make, yeah. Why do you think we own six businesses over here? <laughs> So you could still contribute to a Roth, even if you make over the income limit. And if you're married, it's higher because it takes into consideration both incomes. Right. Okay. So uh, it's graduation day. They give you, well, you graduated during this whole student loan pause thing, which yeah. what, what's the verdict? Is it, are they starting? So they literally thought like all the experts in the field thought that June 22nd was going to be, we, we would know by then because it's always on a Thursday. We still don't know. And it wasn't announced today. I just checked before we got on here. So June 20. But everybody's, everybody that I follow within this like health, um, wealth world is saying like, it's probably going to be that you're going to start having to pay. Right. Or is that shifting now? Cause like as of three or four weeks ago, it was like, it's starting just plan on it. Yeah. So it'll definitely be starting because he signed that bill. Okay. So I would say by end of September, sometime in September or October, payments will start again. The decision about the forgiveness, the 10 or 20,000 forgiveness is what we're waiting on. Got it. I personally don't think it's going to happen. Not that anybody might care about my opinion, but I don't think it's going to happen. It would be great. I mean, it's not a ton of money for some of us who have 200,000 plus in student loans, but $10,000 is $10,000. However, it's not going to solve the fundamental problem. So whenever that decision comes out, we need to look at what Biden's plan B is going to be because he's going to have to have a plan B, which is speculation is that there is a new income driven plan coming out. And so I don't know that repayment is again, I I love that like you and I are, we're solving so many high level things (laughs) in this podcast. The issue is that the government will back up whatever schools say the tuition is that's the problem that is the problem like the problem isn't giving people more options of how to pay it back before they die it's right make education more affordable or not necessary i literally probably a month ago got an email from life we're increasing tuition costs and i was oh my gosh like they've increased tuition at least twice since I've graduated. And I mean, it's been a year. And I asked my mom the other night, my grandfather went to dental school. And so we would always like talk back and forth about things, which was always so fun. But he went in 19, like the late 1940s, early 50s. And it cost him like nothing. And to think of where it was 70 years ago versus where it is today it's just, that's the problem is how crazy expensive it is. Oh yeah. Dentists come out with 300,000. Yeah. Um, but you know, their path to making, I think their path to making money is a little easier than chiropractors, but um, I think so. so that's the problem. But yeah, but yeah okay. like you talk to even a chiropractor who graduated in the eighties or nineties and they came out with less than 20 grand of debt. Well, And the other thing is the interest rates. So to talk real quick about like high interest versus low interest, typically people will say, excuse me, high interest is six to 7%, just based on like, again, personal preference. So in July of 2022, I wrote this down for a post a couple weeks ago, they increased rates in July of 2022. Well, they just now increased rates again for July of 2023. And your grad loans just for graduate school, not the grad plus, 
is over 7%. It's raised to 7.05. Your plus loans are 8.5. And I'm like, that right there, just to go to grad school, you're taking on high interest debt, which is normally like credit card debt or private loans. Whereas typically people could get away with low interest debt because it's normally it was student loans or a mortgage. Like that was okay debt to have because the interest rates are so high. It's just compounding even more against you, the 200,000. Which all like kind of coming back to what we were talking about before makes total sense why a graduate from chiropractic school should absolutely start at 90 to 100,000. Like they should, they need it in order to pay back. But the thing is, is like, what I'm getting reimbursed from patients or like my a price per adjustment has not followed the same inflation rate. So it's like, well, I'm sorry that your student loans are that high, but I can't charge my patients an equivocal amount to solve, a, you know, so it's like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. And that's the problem, especially because people will take out loans. And then unfortunately, a lot of my peers have credit card debt. And so they're trying to get their take-home pay, pay their student loans, pay their credit card debt, and they want to make more than just the minimum payment because, again, that's not solving the interest problem, but it's just this awful cycle that we can't get out of. Yeah, it's, it's vicious. Hey, She Slayers, I have partnered with Well Aligned and Above Down Apparel to give all of my listeners something really special. So listen up, don't skip. A free premium t-shirt. Okay, you get a free t-shirt. So just head over to wellaligned.com forward slash she slays to claim your listener offer. That's all you got to do. Above Down has the coolest and most comfy chiropractic tees that showcase your personality. My favorite is the Mabel. I love it. Um, they're super soft and a great conversation starter. If you do see conversation with, you know, your patients, we call it table talk. What more can you ask for? So I've also been using well-aligned materials for years to educate my patients. They have high quality ROF folders, patient hands out, handouts, office forms, posters, and a ton more. So why recreate the wheel when there's a perfectly designed communication tool ready for you to help educate and inform? Head over to wellaligned.com forward slash she slays to claim your free t-shirt. And I'll drop a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Hi friends, I wanted to take a quick break from the episode to make sure you all know about the cool stuff we have happening over on Patreon. This is a platform where I can offer you extra content, behind the scenes interviews, quick trainings, and exclusive trainings answering your exact question live, back to back with me. It's a way for me to more directly interact with you and post some fun things that would never be in the normal weekly episodes. To check out what we're doing and to sign up, click the link in the show notes. I'd like to take a moment to thank one of our primary sponsors of the podcast, Insight CLA. The Insight tech moves the message off the spine and into the nervous system where the magic of the adjustments can be measured and tracked. Everyone from newborns to seniors are being scanned in my practice and in thousands of other practices like ours so they can be examined and inspired to choose chiropractic care. It's like an instant referral machine because the scans are so visible and informative. Like what patient wouldn't want to know how their nervous system is performing? The staff at CLA are ready to take care of you and answer any questions you may have. They also have an incredible online academy that can help train everyone in the office and help them to feel confident on how to get perfect scans and how to interpret the results. We have been using the Insight technology in our clinics for over seven years now, and it is a complete game changer for conversion, retention, and patient education. Click the link below in the show notes as She Slays listeners get preferred pricing and hundreds of dollars off their purchase. Um, okay. So you graduate, you have the loans. What is the opinion on maximizing loan, like giving as much money as possible to, cause this is assuming you're in your twenties. We're just going to say like somebody who's in their twenties and graduating chiropractic school, they're getting, they have their first job, whether they are starting a practice or, you know, and it's not, they're not rolling in the dough. So they have to decide, invest a lot, pay a little on student loans, or minimum pay a lot, like where, where's the balance there? 
So it's kind of twofold. One, I've listened to your podcast about how you just like pedal to the metal, paid your student loans. And I think that, that. that honestly, yeah. now that we know he's like stupidest thing, it was an ego driven thing. Well, well, and that's where the one fold comes in. It's personal preference. If having debt disrupts your life and like alters your peace of does mind, it change it to know that those were only at like 4%. Oh, <laughs> yep. Yep. It makes him squirm. He's not happy. He's not happy, but you know, the this thing is, is, yeah, the two parts of this answer uh-huh. is if having debt personally affects your peace of mind, pay off the debt, do whatever you can to pay it off. However, now it's kind of more complicated because the interest rates are upwards of 7%. And so if you have rates that are over that six to 7%, I would focus on the loans because you cannot guarantee a stock market average return. Typically the average stock market returns are 10% adjusted for inflation. Conservatively, I like to say they're 7%. So if it's, if your loans are higher than 7%, there's no point in investing because you're not going, you're going to have money, right. Not making the money. So yeah, so um, for the for the kids in back, <laughs> what we're talking about and why we both cringe is like if your debt, so uh, my student loan was at like 4%, if you know, we pay the minimum payment and anything above the minimum payment, we would have been better off investing in something that guarantees 5% or more or not guarantee, yeah, you know, return that you know and that's uncomfortable but but you talked about the money mindset how you were like fortunate to grow up in an environment where you thought about this like literally there are people listening who that's the first time they've ever heard that that like wait so not all debt is bad and it's like no No, not all debt is bad and I actually have had it's been so cool to be able to talk to my friends and like help them through this because they're they're like wow that's such good information that I would never have known something like that. Um, one of my friends had asked, what is it going to, if having $200,000 of debt will affect like a future home purchase. And I have not bought a home. I, we kind of started, but then I moved shocking life, but they won't always take into consideration your, just your student loan debt. They'll look more at like your debt to income ratio. And they like to see your debt to income ratio 50% or less. So you'll still be able to qualify for a home. You'll still be able to buy a home, buy a car. The things that are going to be affected is your loan terms and your rates. So if you have a higher debt to income ratio, you're probably going to have higher interest rates, which is less favorable. Lower, then you'll have lower interest rates on like a home loan or something like that. Okay. So, So, okay. Back to how do you decide? Destroy your life. Pay, right. Yeah. Okay, so how do you decide pay a lot on student loans or invest? I would think the two things. Does having debt at all affect your personal like life? And then is what's the interest rate on those student loan debts? If you can consolidate and get a lower rate, if it's like 6% or 5.5, then I would pay the monthly on all of your student loans. And then I would put 50 to to $100 or whatever you have left over in an IRA go from there. But it really is just based on like how comfortable you feel because people will look at investing as like, that's complicated. It's an unknown space. I want to get myself out of debt. I know how to do this, but you are also totally capable of paying off your debt and investing. And it is also interesting to see like, there's, first of all, there's two resources. The student loan workshop that I did Well, it has an entire flow chart of like questions to ask yourself and answer yes or no to come to your conclusion. But if you go to the student, the federal student loan simulator, it's just online, it's free to use. You can see like enter in all of your loans, their interest rates, they'll consolidate it. And you can see what your monthly payment's going to be, the total loan payment, and then the total forgiveness amount. Like if you have a lot of money and you pay those payments for 20 to 25 years, then that extra amount gets forgiven which I think a lot of people with substantial amount of student loans will ultimately have to do just because the interest rates are higher than 4% now. Caveat to that is whatever amount is forgiven, you will have to pay income taxes on, which is a bitch. Because yeah. That'll be a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I've heard a couple different scenarios where they were talking about the amount that's forgiven. And then like you turn around, you have, oh, the government's 70 grand. And it's like, oh, thanks for forgiving that. Like, 
Can we yeah, just wait I, another year or two to forgive that? I ran a friend's numbers and it was like 152,000 and his forgiveness amount was like 280,000. So it was almost double what he was paying 25 years of monthly payments for. Yeah. And so then you have to pay the tax on the 280,000, which will be, I mean, it's going to be a large sum, but it's not going to be, okay, 150 plus, you know, the tax is that less than the total loan amount. That's something you just have to calculate out. How do you feel about um, people who are married and filing separately? So their Good income. Question. Thank you. <laughs> So before that student loan workshop, I spent a weekend literally down a black hole of tax filing statuses. And I was like, oh my God. But the thing I'll say about that is if you're married and both of you have debt, it will be more beneficial 90% of the time. Again, I can't just make a overall conclusion because everyone's numbers are different, but it'll be a better scenario to just file jointly if you both have student loan debt. If one of you has student loan debt and the other doesn't, that's when married filing separately can come into play. But you, the government rewards married couples to file jointly. Like they don't want more tax returns. So they'll give you tax credits to write off if you're filing jointly. You do not get those if you file separately. So you look at like the tax credits you're missing and the tax quote unquote burden that you'll be like you'll be accruing because you're filing separately. But if you're the larger your income difference is, the less the less optimal it is to file separately. So if one of you is making 60 and one of you is making 110, I would just file jointly because that larger difference is going to put you in different tax brackets, which is going to increase your tax burden and then kind of outweigh the potential savings filing separately would have given you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not an easy answer. Like I think people want, and you probably get this a lot with people sending you DMs mm -hmm. that it's like, oh I, I can't answer that for you exactly. it, because it's complicated and I need to it's do a deep dive into your layers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But overall, the general consensus is the larger the income difference is, the more tax you'll pay and the less optimal a filing separately will be. Okay. Got it. So you got married and I'm assuming your husband makes some money. Uh, so your income increased. Well, but then you stopped working, but then you are working. So I don't know. Anyways, your, your income has increased since college. That is safe to say. So have, what is beyond, where is your mindset now as you start to, and, or honestly, even thinking if you're not quite there yet, thinking like three to five years from now as, you know, income continues. So you start with Roth IRA, then stocks and bonds. So within your Roth IRA, you purchase the stocks and oh, bonds. Oh, got it. Okay. So I always say like the investment, a Roth IRA or an IRA is an investment vehicle. It's like the kind of car you drive. Roth or traditional is the color of the car. That's how you've that's how the taxes are done, Roth versus traditional. And then the amount of seats within the car is stocks or bonds. So you have your car as the investment vehicle, an IRA, a 401k, an HSA. The way you paint the car color is the way you file the taxes for it. And then what you purchase within it are the seats inside. So really the first thing you should do, and we didn't touch on this, but we can, is things to look for in an associateship. Because if your associate employer offers a 401k, which I think more and more are- which I do, Megan. There you go. Wisconsin is looking pretty good now. It is. I think that at the end of the day, your salary does not equal your total compensation and you have to have more incentives. Like if you're investing in your employee for- the long term and you want them to stay with you, you have to give them more than a base salary. So if you get an employer um, 401k, that's great. A 401k is only offered by an employer. So for my friends who are self-employed- The only way to have access to it is if your employer allows yes. it. Yes. There are um, for there are self-employed employment um, investment vehicles. So like you could open four or five different accounts. We won't even touch on that. But for my self-employed friends, I've been like, here's a worksheet. 
this is what you need to know because you're never going to have an employer sponsored 401k. You are your employer. So my employer offered me a match. If that means that every paycheck, I took out 4%, put it in my 401k, and then she matches it 4%. You so match up to 4%. Yeah. And she like, that to me was such a green flag because I was like, she's invested in me as an employee, but also like my future, not yeah. with her as an employee. And that's common. Like, I think my husband gets five or 6%. So anywhere from four to six is a typical employer match. That's the first step. Now I feel bad because I think we're only at 3%. <laughs> now false. I'm embarrassed because I'm comparing awesome. myself to my peers and I suck. No, no, no. You offering a 401k. And I think, again, that's something that employers are going to have to start going towards is investing in retirement because literally over 50% of Americans have no retirement savings, which is just, it's devastating to be honest. But Start with the four, the employer match because that is free money. Like she is giving money into my account. That's free money. And then you would go to the IRA. So you can do traditional IRA. Most people will do Roth. And that is that 6,500 limit a year. It changes. So right now in 2023, that's the limit. Max that out. Then go back to your 401k. So you can increase your contributions because that limit is 20,500. So that's over $26,000 that you're investing a year. If you're like, I'm done, that's amazing. Like if you can put $20,000 in your 401k and $6,000 in your IRA. You're doing good. good you're job. doing great. We're not even there yet, but you're doing great. <laughs> so yes, that is the order of operations. And then there's more steps, but just start with those two accounts. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's only two accounts and you're golden. This you have over a million dollars at 65 years old, which you're gonna, which people are gonna need. I mean, my God, you're, you're gonna, gonna need two million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think with the rate that inflation is going, I think, yeah. Um, I would okay. suggest match 401k and then open an IRA as a new grad to get yourself get that ball rolling. And like we've said before, you can start with 50 bucks a month. You don't have to do the 500 because people are gonna be listening to this like where am I supposed to get that extra $500? That's what I get all the time. I'm like, side hustle. <laughs> right. Start a side hustle. Um, okay. So you have a student loan workshop. Tell me about that. So I, with all this craziness about whether loan forgiveness is going to happen, payments starting, literally the announcement that payments started, I was like, shoot, nobody's thought about this for months, years. And I was like, I'm just going to put all the information I have together. And I hosted it live just on a Zoom. And you can purchase now the recording, but I also give you the entire slide deck. And it's like, I think 80 slides. I give you a lot of information and it covers just the basic repayment options because there's, you know, the four repayment options. But then with income driven, which will be very popular among chiropractors, there's four other options you can choose from. So it kind of just breaks that down. There's a lot of screenshots of like, literal examples run through the simulator and which one, like which option to choose for repayment, how to do it with a spouse, whether the spouse has loans, whether they don't have loans, stuff like that. So yeah. So we have that and we'll have a link yes. for that in the show notes and stuff. But I mean, we, for the people, I mean, there's so many other topics within this. How does someone like get more of you? Like where, <laughs> because there's like seven rabbit holes that I avoided. I was like, no, we're just, we I know. Have time limit we for hours about this, but again, investing doesn't have to be complicated. You can make it complicated, but we start very simple. My Instagram page at wealth with Meg just kind of touches on the basics of things. And then you can buy student loan workshop. You can do a one-to-one -one session with me. And before that session, you will answer their personal questions because if it's a good one-to-one, -one, I have to know a bunch of things about you. So yeah. you need to know how much money you make. Need, need and I will be launching that digital product, which is Mastering Money Basics. And it will be all the rabbit holes that we just avoided in one document. Because I also feel like sometimes with written words, people can go in and they can highlight, they can print it off, they can do with, do with it what they will. Um, so yeah, that's that called a book. It's a book. Yeah. It's a book. It's a book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like all, everything I know, but in words on a page. You're writing a book, Megan. Oh, uh, yeah. Except it's not going to be the full, like, 300 pages. Not, no, not, like, ebooks could be 50 pages. They could be 20 pages. 
I literally think I'm at 75 right now. Yeah, I, it's, it's just like in the book. Yeah, I want to be able to provide enough, but do it in an understandable, easy mm-hmm. way to implement action items. Were there any books that have been incredibly helpful, whether it was just around like, yes, understanding more, but like mindset, like what tools yes. and resources have been super helpful for you? Um, the mindset is, oh my gosh. Oh, it's psychology of money. So money mindset, read psychology of money. That was mind blowing. And then a book that I will always recommend is the simple path to wealth. It's by a dad who wrote blog posts for his daughter, but his daughter like was at the age where she was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And so he just kept it and put it into a book. And then she started listening and implementing it all. But it is. Yeah. What's the name of that one? The Simple Path to Wealth. It is so easy to understand. He kind of dives into two, like with investing, you only really need four funds and you could be diversified. A lot of people will do more than that, but he starts you with very good basics. And then I Will Teach You to Be Rich is also a really good book. Um, The author, Ramit Sethi, is no bullshit, just giving it to you straight. And he dives into like the whole housing thing right now, which. I appreciate that because as a renter, I think I'll rent for a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Now's a good time to be renting. Yeah. So that's a great book as well. Awesome. Thank you. You have provided an extreme amount of value for people. Um, You're obviously have done your homework. um, Thank you. And thanks for taking the Enneagram test. But I just want to be clear that if you wouldn't have, I would have diagnosed you as a three at this point anyways I think it's pretty accurate yeah yeah yeah. seems pretty accurate so much for having me on I mean this was so great we touched on so many different topics and I really think that it kind of gives people a good foundation for where to start yeah agreed all right she slayers I will have as many links for you as possible below go follow Megan on Instagram or TikTok um you know look for that student loan workshop and then look for the digital words on paper that are coming message not an ebook, but maybe an ebook, a dig- it's a digital product um, coming down the road from her. So until next week, she slayers. Bye. Bye.